over to Sean. And hey. Sean, um, you work... I guess I don't even know your formal title. I'll call you the localization <laughs> guy, but I'm pretty sure that's not on your resume. No, no. Localization manager but is what's on my resume, but I do all of it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and all of it basically means for, you know, we support Lord of the Rings Online in English, French, and German. And the French and German part, you're the person who coordinates to make sure that that gets done by the development team, that gets processed. Uh, by our localization groups that, that do that various work and then gets back to the team in time to really do what needs to be done. And they do right. follow-up work, right? Right. Okay. So how do we localize? How do I what? <laughs> how, how do we do it? How do we localize something wow. like an update? Um, so pretty much uh, I coordinate with, uh, with Ben and uh, we schedule uh, a time when the, uh, the development team is done, or at least mostly done, in the case of large expansions like Mordor, um, with the actual story writing. Uh, and at that point, I will rip the strings out of the game um, and feed them through uh, machine translation. Okay. Uh, and that, uh, that actually uses a dictionary, a special dictionary that we developed over the years off of Lotro. So it's not it's not like a generic dictionary. It's it's specific to Lotro. Okay. Um, and then once that's done, uh, I package everything that's not a hundred percent up and send it off to our translation partner. And the uh, the translation teams over there um, take care of the rest. And then That's actually a great point, though, because we're not just talking about, you know, modern text. We're talking yep. about Tolkien in particular, which is, right. I, I imagine, one of the more challenging things to localize. For that. Yes, especially yeah. with uh, with something as large as Lotro. Um, Lord of the Rings Online boasts somewhere north of six million words, um, which is... Oh, wow, is that enormous. real? Is that That's a real fact? That's a real fact. Oh. That's that's a, that's a lot of text. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, yeah, we only have a small set of translators working on it, so we we do need. That's why we leverage machine translation as much as we can. Yeah. Even though it's not perfect. Exactly right. Exactly right. You know, clearly, we're not going to get uh, totally into the the topic of of that because people people have different opinions about that. But mm -hmm. why don't we why don't we just sort of mention what we get a lot of requests to sort of say, can you do this language? Can you do that language on top of it? And it, it's got to be difficult to um, sort of set limits as to what, what we can do, right? So like, let's say we were to, to all of a sudden say, you know what, we really need the, the game in, I don't know, Ancient Aleutian, whatever <laughs> Aramaic. We need to we need to translate the game into Aramaic. Uh, how do you actually go about finding, say, localized groups that can handle that sort of thing? Uh, well, we have a a partner who does this sort of thing for uh, other game companies, and they they have a robust set of translators that work for them. Okay. So so it's really it's really just knowing the landscape of the contractors and yes. all that sort of thing. Yep. All right. And how long have you been with Lotro? Oh, uh, I've been with Lotro in, in... I've been with Lotro before it was Lotro. Oh, okay. <laughs> before time was time! So, so, so that, back, was, that was some 13-odd yeah. years ago. Oh, 13 years. So you're really one of our most tenured uh, people inside of the, the current structure here. Mm -hmm. okay. Most of my time has been spent um, on, on QA... Uh, okay. So I've done I've done a lot of uh, similar stuff to what John does, um, but the last several years I've been I've been doing localization. Fantastic, fantastic. All right. Um, so does that mean you're in the middle of? Actually, let me ask this question: How do you localize black speech? Uh, we don't. We don't. You just <laughs> black sort of speech leave it? is black speech in, okay. in every language. Okay. Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> I should have known that. Um, yeah. So I guess you're just really in the middle right now of doing a lot of prep work ahead of Mordor, yep. right? So we've 
we've got at least some stuff that I know was passed to you and is in the process of getting translated, localized right now, right? Yep. Why do uh, they call it localized instead of translated? Do you know that? <laughs> they call it localized because it's not straight translation. Uh, oh, you, okay. you actually have to uh, rephrase the way things are said. Because the way the way you say something in English is not the same thing. It's not the same way that you would say it in German or French or Russian or any other language. Sure. Great. All right. I will let you go. All Thank right. you so much, Sean, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. <laughs> any kind of final thoughts or something you want to mention? Um, yep. Happy anniversary. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do we have? Uh, do we have? A second here. Let me shut off the. Hello. All right. So I just said a little conferring behind the scenes. I was here before, but now I'm back. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Started from the bottom. Now he's here. All right. I am. Just the camera, just slightly for you guys. I gotta go. Cool. And uh, we uh, need you to basically take the mic off the stand and just pass the mic. Good. Beastie Boys style. Beastie yeah. Boys style. That dates me, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no. I got it, too. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, we, we lost one of our mics today, so we're, we're having to share. <laughs> but uh, let me uh, let me actually uh, just mention here from the left here, we've got a Maid of Lions. Uh, in the middle, we have Elise. And what's your forum name? Uh, Lonsu Evie. Lonsu Evie. I've, I've only posted once. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then Ryan here on the right as well. And you've, you've been back, so. So since uh, the new one here is you, Elise, you're a relatively new uh, entry to the Lotro dev team. Yes. Uh, I started on Lotro in November only, so yeah. I've only been here for one update, and I've only been... I was at Turbine for only a year before that, so relatively new in general. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's right. You didn't. You actually came to Locher from a different game that was in, in the uh, Turbine side. Yes, there, so, I, yeah. I worked on Batman Arkham Underworld and on the Game of Thrones in development game. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so what have you had the opportunity to do so far in Locher? Uh So far, just U20 uh, and, and what we're working on now, the next update. Uh, so I did the No Man Lands uh, content which received some praise and some criticism, and that's fine because I'm new, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's a, we can actually talk about that a little bit. I can. It, it is difficult for folks. Uh, you know, all three of you have to deal with the fact that just about anything you do, there are going to be people who like it, and there are going to be people who don't like it. <laughs> and how do you deal with those quality judgments and still try to do... I mean. You can't worry too much about the people that hate a thing. You have to still be doing your work. And you also have to keep in mind that it's easy for the negative stuff to maybe get prioritized in your brain over the positive. But you also need to keep in mind that, hey, just because that one guy on the Internet said it sucked, that doesn't mean it sucks. You know, there's also a whole bunch of other people who like the thing. So how do you deal with sort of the mental sort of gymnastics that it take to be able to uh, make the best content you can make. Hi there. Uh, so I've, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I still haven't entirely mastered that yet uh, because it, it often is the – you remember the negative ones the most. Like, like you, could, you could get a lot of uh, praise for a thing, but it's the, it's the one – that one guy – um, <laughs> is is going to be the one that you nice. that you driving home that you that you think about. But but that part of the part of the job though is sifting through the 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 comment the the, the negative comments say the criticism like that and finding uh, so they're really mad about this. But what what is it specifically that they are upset about? And and maybe we can't change it for this most recent thing. But for 
that that goes into the back of your mind and you keep that in mind when you are making the next thing um so uh like we all we all have all of us have uh oh, yeah. have 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 content that we that we have designed and then the next thing that we do we won't design the next thing the same way because we learned lessons from it and i think that's a that's a useful that's a useful skill to get and it, it needs constant practicing um yeah. To figure out exactly what it is that you need to take from criticism and and discard the stuff that maybe feels a little hurtful, but like take the the kernel of useful information from it. Cool. Um, yeah. And I, I would say you you need to try to remember that uh, for that one person that is complaining on the forums, there are who knows how many people that enjoyed it and just didn't feel the need to go on the forums and complain about it because they thought it was perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So ooh, ooh, I just thought of something. Oh, okay. So I'm playing near Automata, right? Okay. Um, yeah. And it's a great game, but I'm stuck on a boss, and uh, and this I I have got been getting myself frustrated about this boss for the like the the better part of a of a day. Um, and it's inter it's interesting to me to 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 sort of be in the player's shoes that if I were to go to the forums for that game, um, <laughs> uh, like yeah. I if if I knew that they were listening, I could I could complain about oh my gosh I can't believe you designed this boss this way um, I'm so mad about it um, but but like maybe part of the like being a, a a game developer game designer like I know there's someone on the other side who is is uh who designed it that way on purpose and maybe i as the player just need to keep practicing get better think about it but i'm sure that there's something i could say a kernel that they could take to have made it less frustrating like for example to have healing items available in a shop at the place i'm stuck at a <laughs> uh, question from youtube chat this is from diogo uh elise did you have anything to do with sort of the rep items? Is that something you had? That's the systems person. No, right? yeah, that's systems. Okay. We are content. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and that was a question about why were they able to be given to others in the no man lands. So that's probably where that came from, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just uh, distracted by some of the Beastie Boys puns that are going on in our Twitch chat. You're welcome. No sleep till Mordor. <laughs> yep. We've made oh, that. We have Very to fight yes, we have. for our right <laughs> to party tree. I yeah. did ask them there to drop mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will not so. drop the mic. No. All right, so let me ask you a tough question then, um, Made of Lions, and I ask this only because I know that you are a talented guy and can answer it. Uh-oh. How do you plan to justify having high elves when only so few are said to have done things in Middle Earth? Uh, our definition of high elves is not solely elves that have seen the light of the two trees. It's also their descendants, which means that we are not only are we lowering the the power level slightly. Like I think these are still incredibly impressive beings. Um, but we are, since we're also opening it up to essentially the descendants of elves that have seen the light of the two trees, then we can we can have a more of a a, a broad sort of uh, number of these guys running around. Um, and there will be a, there will be interesting story justifications yeah. for for some of this stuff too. So, all right. Um. Did it work? <laughs> well, I'll find out in about 30 seconds. But no, uh, basically, uh, I appreciate your answer on that, too. Uh, do we plan to release Mortar? As a, I'm going to just try to get through some of these questions here. Some apply to you, some apply to not. Or is Mortar going to have a PvP zone? Uh, I don't know, right? No on that. None so None currently. Um, Can you tell us anything about upcoming group content? Uh, most of that content's going to no. is currently planned for my understanding um, after the initial release of Mordor. Oh, I can talk a bit about that. Oh, fantastic! Um, we are planning to have uh, a raid, a multi-boss raid that comes out following the initial release of the Mordor expansion. Um, it, we're going to hold it back a bit, not to have people race into endgame content right away, but there, there will be a multi-boss raid. Uh, it will be taking place in uh, the Dora Marth division in an area called the Abyss of Mordath. 
Heck yeah. Um, you have so much info. I know. <laughs> People are losing their minds already. <laughs> but uh, I think that's about everything I can actually say on it just, right now. just dropped a what? About the raid. mic there? drop. Yeah. Nice. That's very cool. That's very cool. Well, thank you uh, very much for uh, mentioning yeah. that. Yeah, so there will there will definitely be a, a place for group content in the Mordor expansion. <laughs> there will be. Uh, let's see. Are we planning to release a new class with the new race? No. No. Opinion for president. Wow. Uh, I said. think this is a lore question probably for Maid of Lions. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we plan to have content concerning Gimli being installed as Lord of the Glittering Caves? You know I don't want to talk about spoilers. Yep. Wink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm just going through our chat. Oh, actually... Back to you. One more high elf Jeez, question. Hold it. No, I don't want to hold it. The, the community loves talking to you because they know <laughs> that you've got the crunch. They I know I'm going to slip yeah. up and say something I'm not yep. supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> How do we deal with sort of the mix of high elves in the trilogy as opposed to the Silmarillion? Because a, a lot of the high elf stuff is in the Silmarillion as well. So how do we deal with sort of the you know, making sure that what we're implementing really falls in line with our trilogy. Work. Yeah, we've gotten really good at this point at uh at at kind of using a fine tooth comb to to like to to note what we can say and what we can't say. Um, so we, uh, I think we have a pretty a a pretty good handle on what we can incorporate and what we can't. Um, so like we we won't be incredibly specific about things that that you might um that you might infer about your own character. Um, but like we, we won't be having elves talking about things that they're not supposed to be talking about and like, and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's kind of a fine line that we have to dance for high elves. Um, a lot of the places are, are named in the appendices, but not entirely described. So we can sort of, sort of hand wave our way through that nice let me ask a kind of a generic question and that is applies to all three of you what is the best part about being a content designer is it uh being able to sort of i don't, yeah, I don't know let me just leave it open-ended yeah uh, I'd say my favorite part is getting to create characters, uh, work with existing characters, and just making up stories. That's what I like to do as a creative person, is some combination of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really just like writing stories within the world of Middle-earth. Um, it's by far one of my favorite fantasy books, and I... I'm just so proud and excited to be a part of the world of Lord of the Rings. Everything Pinion just said applies to me, too. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds good. Um, I think I'm actually going to, unless you guys have something else you want to bring up here, I think I'm going to take a little break for all of us, maybe... Uh five, ten minutes here just to stretch our legs, get some water, make sure we're all keeping active rather than sitting in a chair all day. So I think that we're going to wrap we that up. Every day. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, all three of you, for joining us here today. Uh, it's lovely to have you here.